Good afternoon, everyone. So welcome, everyone, for the devotion. Let us begin with uh, by making sign of faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Let us pray together. God, our Father, as we prepare to enter the mystery of these three most holy days, we thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ. You sent him to nourish us and to lead us to you. Help us to use his life as an example of selfless love. Today we ask you to not only wash our feet, but to wash our lives so that we may be cleansed and made whole. This we ask to your holy name. Amen. Let us uh, sing song, Love Little Me.
Let us pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. Give us faith to receive it, understanding to know what it means, and the will to put it into practice. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Thanks be to God. No responsible sir, sir. A blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon to the I'll call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death and his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Let us sing sweet hour of prayer. Please stand.
A reading from the Holy Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon, the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever, whoever has made has no need except to have his feet washed for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are the clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garment back on and reclined at table again, again he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear friends, a popular form of education in the low grace, you know, form in many years has been the procedure called show and tell. I know you are educator, you must know this procedure. This is the way how we educate our children. You show them example and tell them why you do it. And then you remember what you want to teach them. I see this is the way of how Jesus educates his disciples. He saw then he explained to them. You know, all the night before his death, Jesus gave his disciples the message, the commandment of love. So when Jesus gave this to his disciples, he made sure that his message would not be lost. Jesus, uh, so Jesus gave them a very concrete example. He showed it and told them so that his disciples would remember and never forget what Jesus was teaching them. You know, at the Last Supper, he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist, 
poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, then dried them with a the towel. Imagine 12 men widen their eyes in disbelief. The master was doing the work of the servant. You know, Jesus, their master, is washing his disciples' feet. When he had finished washing their feet, Jesus put on his clothes and returned to his place. Then he explained to them, Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them, You call me teacher and law, rightly so, for that is what I am, now that I, your law and teacher, have washed your feet. You also should watch one another's feet. I set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. He washed their feet. Includes Judas, the betrayer. I know that some people uh, serve others, but they pick someone they like. But you see that Jesus do service to all, no matter who they are. Sometimes we just want to pick our favorite. You know, Jesus washed their feet and, and you see that Jesus, uh, Jesus gave them an example of humble service. He expected them to love one another and to do humble service for one another. And I recall that, you know, in, uh, in the early days of Christianity, you know, by that time, Christian kings and emperors used to copy Jesus' action at the Last Supper. They would wash the feet of the poor people, sometimes beggars. You know, the, the kings of England would have a homeless people and brought to them once for each year of their reign and would wash their feet before giving them clothing and food. It's a good custom. But this, you know, ended in year 1685, when King, King James II decided that this was beneath his dignity. So he decided to stop it, foot washing, and just giving money to the poor. And I tell you that it's easier to give money than it's to do humble service, to do service to the least or and lowest among us. And I tell you that the giving something to the poor, he called alms giving. You see, alms giving is different things. Alms giving is, is not the lesson Jesus teaching the disciples to do on that night. What Jesus is teaching to his disciples is about humble service to their brothers and sisters. It's not easy to, to wash the feet of, of, of the poor, of the, the people you don't like. You know, my friends, and, uh, in, at the Last Supper, Jesus uh, we heard it from the, the letter of Paul from the re, uh, reading today. We know that Jesus also instituted the Blessed Sacrament, the Lord's Supper, in the context of Passover meal. And Jesus wanted to make sure that they remember and do it often. So he showed up and told them. So as we see during Passover meal, Jesus acting strangely. As Jesus held up the bread, he said, this is my body. And he said, this is my body for you. And the same thing with the cup, this is my blood. And do this in remembrance of me. You know, in, in these words, Jesus asked us to keep doing this, to take his body and drink his blood and to separate the Lord's Supper as often as we can. So we see that any time we come together for worship, we also celebrate the Lord's Supper. And you see that for the cup, Jesus said, this is the cup. The cup is new covenant in my blood. By this, Jesus 
anticipating the shedding of his blood on Calvary. You know that in, in ancient days, people of Israel make covenants with, a, uh, with animal blood. The covenants were often confirmed and sealed with animal blood. They used animal sacrifice, animal blood. And like an old, old covenant, you see Moses sprinkle animal blood to confirm the covenant with God on Mount Sinai. And now Jesus is about to go to his death. He declares that the shedding of his blood will inaugurate the new covenant. So we see that God wants to make a new covenant with us, you and me, to the shedding of the blood of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, is not by animal blood, but the blood of his son. And by partaking of that body and blood, by eating the body and drinking blood of Jesus, we, we agree to be partners of this covenant. You see, in the old days, yeah, you see that, but brotherhood, you can share the, uh, the blood, you know, drink blood. That's why how people make covenant. And we agree to be partner in this covenant. And by this covenant, we become his children, his people. And by taking his body and his blood, we share the lives of Jesus. We share eternity. And that's why Jesus said in, in John chapter 6, whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have a life with you. He who eats my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. In John chapter 6. Why we have such eternal life? Because we commune with Jesus by eating his body and drinking his blood. We share his life. We save his eternity. And you see, in the new covenant, as Jesus said, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. I see that is a mystical communion, mystical union. Yeah. Jesus made it clear that those who receive it, they sacramentally commune with him. And also, I say that, and also with others. Because why? Because we all share the same bread and the same cup of Christ, right? So that's why we are committed with others. So in the time we gather to worship, we celebrate the Lord's Supper, Eucharist table, the covenant is renewed. You see that the new covenant is renewed every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper. And the communion with Christ and with others is strengthened. And this becomes the basis for the uh, for service of the Lord's Supper, which is a heart, is a heart of our Christian living. Coming together for the Lord's Supper must be the sign of a living, mutually serving community of brothers and sisters. You know, it, this spirit of love and service of brothers and sisters wish to be the outstanding characteristic of the Christian disciples. You see, at the Lord's Supper, we are called to commit with others by sharing, taking the same bread and the same cup. Consequently, because of communion, right, we are called to do humble service because we are called to love one another and called to humble service, to do humble service for one another. Washing our feet is a message of love, is a message of humble service for one another. As a, you, any position you take it, priest, parents, teacher, employers, managers, for whoever join together as the body of Christ at the Lord's Supper, we are called to do such humble service. Communion with Jesus and with others at the Lord's Supper should move and inspire us to render humble service to one another. 
And that's why you see the communion and loving service to others go together. Any time comes to the Lord's table, we are called, to, when we receive it, we are called to do love and service and to love one another. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, on the eve of your death, you demonstrated to your disciples the magnitude of your love by giving them the sacrament of forgiveness and remembrance. So as we bring this service to a close, may we to appreciate the unwavering love that you have for each of us. We ask for your blessings, your protection, and to life with you. Amen. Please stand. Let us now say together the prayer of Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us sing together, close in Him, and can it be?
Thank you everyone for attending the devotion, and may God bless you. And uh, I, I believe that after this one, we have soup du jour, right? <laughs> in the in the so good, please stop by and to re make a refreshment. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah.